Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's time for the 13 Nights of Halloween, starring Big Anklevich and Rish Outfield. Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And you are back for another installment of the 13 Nights of Halloween. That's right. How's it been going for you, man? It's been going well. I've managed to avoid all of the masked killers uh, so far. And um, I'm hoping to make it all the way through this entire marathon. You know, I I hope to finish first, I guess, instead of Jason or Michael Myers getting to me. All right. Well, good luck with that, man. (laughs) How about you, man? Well, uh, you know, you can never have sex uh, or you're dead. So I've I've been all right. They've left me alone. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so uh, one of the things that we did uh, is when we announced this, we asked listeners to give us some topic suggestions. And so let's do an episode where we pull from that, okay? Okay. Okay, so one of our listeners suggested we talk about let's see fears phobias the films of jason statham okay so um let's see i I mean in general do you have a fear of of the films of jason statham i i don't think so okay okay well let me just go through the filmography and uh, just say yes or no on uh, on each of the films, okay? Okay. Uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Uh, no. No. Uh, Snatch. Um, no. No, I, I don't either. It says he was in Ghosts of Mars, which, you know, actually is a horror film, but I don't remember him being in it, and it was a really bad movie. Did you see it? No, I didn't. Okay, well, then I won't ask you that one. Uh, the Transporter. No. No, no not really. Uh, the, the Italian Job remake? Uh, no. No, not too scary there. Uh, Transporter 2. No. Revolver. That was a good Beatles album. Yes, but, but a really, really crappy movie. That was the uh, Kabbalah movie. Uh, uh, but was it scary? No. No. Crank. Ooh. <laughs> no. No. Um, yeah, for me either. Um, you know, this is <sighs> starting to get repetitive here. Um, the Bank Job. Is that a, a sequel to The Italian Job, but smaller? Maybe. I don't think so. Hmm. No, no I don't it's... think so. Uh, Transporter 3. There's a Transporter 3? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> How about Crank 2? Oh, Crank 2. No. What? what, did you see Crank 2? No, I didn't see Crank 2. Okay, well, did you see Crank 1? No, I didn't see Crank 1. <laughs> I mean, this is going to sound like a stupid question, but have you ever seen a Jason Statham movie? Uh, you know, I don't think I have. Oh. Okay, well then, maybe I shouldn't bother to go through the you know i'm not sure that the guy in the forums understood uh what we were going for here Uh, i mean like he was in the expendables movies he was in that movie with jennifer lopez but i mean he was in no mio and juliet but uh, why would you be afraid of jason statham movies because they're really bad maybe but you don't know because you haven't seen them (laughs) I've seen the trailers for many of oh, them, okay. and that was enough to let me know. Jason okay. Statham just seems like one of those guys that doesn't have a lot of personality. I don't see how he can be a lead actor because he's just a quiet, menacing guy. Or am I wrong? This is fake Jason Statham, and you're listening to The 13 Nights of Halloween. <laughs> I, you know, I apologize, man. I, I shouldn't have pulled this question. Uh, we should have gone. I, I should have looked more carefully before I, I chose it. 
Uh, how about if you choose the next one? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I guess that's probably a good idea, really. Yeah. I. Sorry, guys. You just saw movies and went for it. Yeah. I, well, I kind of like Jason Statham myself, but... But yeah, it was just it was a it was a a bad suggestion. Sorry. Um, All right. Well, uh, I guess we're done for today, then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, folks. Uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. And uh, we'll my be guess back... is they didn't. <laughs> Probably, but we'll be back again tomorrow, and uh, surely you'll enjoy that one. Uh, sh- yes, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. Thanks for listening. See you later. Oh, and tip your waitresses. By that, I mean donate to the show. That's right. They're on their feet all day long, and I'm constantly slapping their... Wait. Oh, it's just to mean to donate the show. Never mind. Yeah. See you, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons license. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. I just, I guess we do enough of that already, but it's always me touting some book I've read for Audible. Yeah, it'd be nice to have more regular posts in there sometimes. <laughs> we haven't got many, many of those on our blog anymore. What, but like what? About what? I don't know. Just the other day we were talking and... Well, we can do that. I, you that keep up on your family post. Genital mutilation we talked about, and I just thought that's an interesting subject. That really got me thinking about genital mutilation. Right, and so, well, folks, I'm going to tell you all about my thoughts. Well, then we've got a topic for tomorrow's <laughs> blog post. I think it would be a blast. Like, I wrote one just the other day about, and I guess we'll have to cut this out, but I was editing Office Visit. The one that you just posted on your Did blog? You read yeah, it? I read it today. And yeah, I was just like, fudge, this is so good, man. But I, I, I is it? Renee and Lauren, I, I mean, you were in the room. Mm-hmm. Those guys were so friggin' good. I mean, it, Renee, I think particularly because somehow she seemed vulnerable and right. And I was so afraid for her. But I don't know if that's because I wrote the story. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily the case. Like I remember thinking that when I was editing your uh, the calling. Which is interesting because I think I mentioned it in the episode where I read the story, The Calling, when we did The Broken Mirror. And I was like, eh, that was pretty good. And I gave it, I don't know, seven or something like that. Three. But, but <laughs> there was a lot of depth to the story that I didn't get in the first reading. And then when I was working on the editing of it, I was just like, man, this is a good story. This is a good scene. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. And uh, it's not necessarily your only your own stories that you'll notice that with. I think I've noticed that a lot editing stories for our show. Like it's the same kind of deal listening to like Beachcombing, for example, where you're just like, oh, man, this is good right here. Holy cow. Now, you know? was Beachcombing the one where the kid had tactile yeah. psych- s- s- psychic ability? Mm-hmm. He wasn't supposed to uh, touch the pale balloons. Something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. And then he uh, touches that guy's shoes and is just overwhelmed by the sadness. sadness. And so he goes and gets all his favorite objects that he keeps that have the fun, the happiness to it, and goes and puts them all on his shoes. But of course, the guy's already drowned himself. But See, now I want to stop recording and listen to that episode. It was a good episode. Amazingly good. But I don't know that I knew exactly how good it was until I actually heard the finished product. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, hopefully people feel that way on Office Visit. They feel the way that I do because, you know, but you remember that in college when we would do auditions and somebody would say something and you'd be like, that line was never funny before. She made it funny. That was always so cool.